Let's do it. Word. This is session number 24. Uh, this is quite nearly, we're just shy of one year into this campaign. Wow. Which is Oh, amazing. man. Nobody thought we could do it. Uh, All right. Uh, Welcome okay. back to New Kamak. <laughs> Offering to expedite Augustine's purchasing of a local gun shop, a pirate-themed realtor named Patty Buckmaster sent Augustine on a quest to clean up grisly scenes of animals dismembered into the shapes of pentagrams in four vacant south-side houses in the territory of a gangrel who is suspected of going feral and draining humans. Augustine's magical expertise led him to three conclusions that a magical ritual was conducted at each pentagram, that there was another pentagram waiting for him in a fifth house, and that all five were positioned at the points of a larger pentagram that spread across the neighborhood and was having an unknown magical effect upon it. Excavo was interrogated and tortured by the mortal hunters who kidnapped her, and the experience resulted in a second personality beginning to form in Excavo's mind, the capabilities of which have not yet been revealed. The hunters reveal that the mysterious Palladian that our heroes have been searching for is a priest who's been hiding in New Kamek. They had Excavo summon Archibald to a church where all of our PCs met not only Father Francisco Palladian, but his four fearsome students, Leonard O, Ralph L, Michelle Angelo, and Donna Teller. I regret nothing. <laughs> each wielding a different exotic Christian-themed weapon. Except for... Except for Donna, who just uh, had a gun. After the release of Excavo and a tense negotiation, Father Palladian was convinced to tell our heroes about the extinction-level threat to vampires that he has been both hunting and hiding from. Father Palladian resumes his exposition. Can I assume that you are not acquainted with the woman called Farika Bint Nidal? Al Mahdi. God bless you. <laughs> well, I. I would uh, no, I not. do not know this person. Well, my organization has been able to piece together information about this person and her intentions through generations of hunters collecting witness testimonies, intercepting written communications, as well as capturing servants of hers and. Well, let's say, interviewing them. She was born in Syria sometime in the early 14th century and still walks the earth as a vampire. I've been investigating her for many years because I think she has the potential to become a grave threat to humanity. Farika considers herself to be the fulfillment of Muslim prophecy about a person who is destined to end this world and usher in a new era. This person, called the Mahdi, is expected to appear when the world is at its most corrupt and rid it of all evildoers, establishing himself as the sole ruler of the world for a short time, after which Jesus Christ will return to earth to rule alongside him. Now, she doesn't appear to care that all prophecies identify the Mahdi as a man. In fact, she seems convinced that a great many prophecies about the end of the world across the Abrahamic religions all foretell her arrival. She has therefore been secretly working in the shadows for seven centuries to bring about the apocalypse. Now, we do not know precisely what her plan is, but we've gathered some clues. We've learned that she has said that she will save humanity from those who prey upon them. She said that vampires have feasted for too long and shall soon know famine. That she will create a new world, a world without the curse of the third human. And that she is... Uh, taking back the power that should only be wielded by the righteous. 
She seems to believe that it is the destiny of the Mahdi to destroy all vampires and consume their power to increase her own, so that when she is finished, she will single-handedly wield the collective strength of your entire race. Then no one on earth will be able to challenge her rule, and she will reshape the world as she sees fit. Now, the closest that we've come to Farika was three years ago in Israel. And at the mention of Israel, you remember that Archon Glass, uh, one year ago or one week ago, depending on whether we're remembering in character or out of character, uh, he said that there was an issue in that region of the world that the Camarilla was dealing with, in that that's where Prince Delacroix was supposed to be relocated to assist them. Uh, Father Palladian continues, In Israel, we captured one of her cultists, and under interrogation, he told us that Farika would be gathering her mortal servants together that night to meet in a secret location. We were led into an ambush, and in the dead of night, in an alley that led to the supposed site of the meeting, her cultists swarmed us, and a monstrous green creature pounced upon one of my students and tore her to shreds. As we desperately fought it, it killed all but one of my warriors, and nearly myself, but I was able to sever its arm with this. And he lifts his robe, and you can see uh, Father Pladian is in the shadows in the, uh, the doorway of the church, but you see the glint coming off of the hilt of a sword that he has at his hip. This green monster seized Venus, uh, my only surviving student, and fled, dragging her away. I fought off the rest of the cultists, Overhearing one of them instruct the others to take the bodies of my fallen students to bring to Meloch Hamavet, which is Hebrew for the angel of death. I returned to America and began preparing a new group of students to wage war. For my protection, my location has been kept secret, but I've suspected that my student who is captured would be forced to reveal information to the enemy that would be used to eventually locate and kill me so I wouldn't be a threat to Farika's plans. The green creature met the description of one that was known to us and which Farika had reportedly made contact with earlier in Germany. Uh, do any of you happen to be familiar with the legend of Die Zumpfhexe? I can't say that we are. God bless you again, sir. Die Zumpfhexe is the only name known for this creature. In German, it means the Swamp Witch. We have records of a witch living in 16th century Germany who is allegedly the cause of people's minds becoming corrupted in her village. She was said to have hypnotic powers over people, so she was exiled from civilization. Some accounts say that she was sentenced to be executed, and either she convinced the judge to change her sentence to exile, or she actually was executed and came back because she had discovered the secret to immortality. Regardless, she established an area of swampland as her territory, and anyone who dared venture too close if they came back at all, would come back with stories of a feral, babbling woman clad only in mud and fungal growths, wading through the muck and subsisting on mushrooms and insects. As decades and centuries passed, parents passed on to their children the warning that this area of the swamp was forbidden, because despite the natural lifespan of the witch having long since passed, those youth who were brave or foolish enough to enter the Forbidden Swamp on bright moonlit nights would see the distant outline of a monster rising up out of the water to investigate who was trespassing into its territory. Children were warned to turn back if they saw a strange pale green fungus which only grew in the part of the swamp that had been claimed by the witch long ago. 
hunters of supernatural creatures have tried to enter the swamp to find and kill this creature, but none have been successful. At night, all have died in their attempts, and during the day, none have been able to find the creature. Thirty years ago, a group tracking Farika, led by my predecessor, followed her to De Zumphex's swamp, where they witnessed Farika and the monstrous witch fight to a standstill, and then reach some sort of agreement and walk deeper into the swamp together and out of sight, having apparently formed an alliance. The next day, the hunters managed to capture one of Farika's servants, who had been stealing livestock for her, but all that he told us was that, was that she had blessed them by removing a pestilence from the swamp that had plagued them for generations, and that she was gathering soldiers, and that she had left the country traveling east in search of war. In search of war, removing a pestilence, corpses for the angel of death, Vampires shall soon know famine. We believe that she has assembled four powerful beings to fulfill the prophecy of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and to serve as her henchmen, with Dizumphexa becoming the horseman known as Pestilence, uh, a necromancer of some sort serving as death, an, uh, an unknown person serving as war, and Farika herself taking on the mantle of famine. I, my students, my superior and his superior, and now the four of you are the only ones who know of this threat. Seven humans and four vampires. And if the horsemen kill me, and then leave this city, they'll surely go further underground and become much harder to track, if not impossible. So it appears that it is up to us to stop them. And I understand that it would naturally seem like my associates and I wouldn't want to stop her, but while her apparent quest to kill all vampires would naturally make her an ally to our cause, we simply cannot allow one of your kind to become all-powerful. So we now build our strength and prepare to hunt once more. But I fear what information about me, my abducted student Venus, may have been forced to share. It's quite possible that the Four Horsemen know that I am their greatest threat, and that as we speak, they're coming to kill me so that they can continue their work in secret, unchallenged until it's too late for anyone to stop them. And they may already be working from the shadows to weaken your community of vampires here so that you they won't have. be able to interfere when they're ready to come for me. You say that they have? The former prince of New Kamak had dealings with her. He was challenged to a correspondence chess game, uh, which was infused with some type of magic that I believe left him cursed in some way and unable to fulfill his former duties. Uh, this might be a good time to match, uh, mention that I have challenged her to a chess game, like on Friday. <laughs> Saturday, actually, but yeah. Saturday. <laughs> If she accepts, she'll be at Club Wonderland. So we might be able to just knock this thing out. Darby, how do you like the odds of a uh, four on 11? <laughs> 11 of us, four of them. I, th I think we got them, Chief. Easy. Yeah, I mean, thanks for the intel, uh, Father. I, I don't know don't... how you are around, like... Uh, I know church is more your thing. We have a, a weird nightclub. Uh, if you want to do battle there, we got weapons and stuff. A weird nightclub. <laughs> we, we have suspected since arriving in the city that Club Wonderland has, in fact, been a haven to vampires, uh, some of which seem to hang out there uh, not 
not very discreetly. Yeah, now, probably the 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 blood orgies they used to do there that are supposed to be starting again were not uh, a great cover. If you don't mind my asking, what happened as a consequence of this chess match that you say cursed your predecessor, the the former prince here? Prince Delacroix's mind became clouded. We didn't know him before we were brought to New Kamak, but the idea that someone with his behavior, his mannerisms, would have been the prince and able to execute them with any kind of success is unlikely. The Delacroix we saw was reduced to a shell of himself. So this reduced the leadership of your community here uh, to... It was, it was just You're rendered... looking at it, Chief! Certainly, right to here. the point where, A, we had to be abducted and brought in to bring about some positive change, but they also... They needed to bring in the big guns. To the had point to put where the, pros in charge. the vampire community of New Kamak was disrupted. The Nosferatu underground have fled. There are well, gangs and internal strife and other struggles happening. Much in New Kamak has been upended, though I'm unsure, other than your presence here, what the importance of this place is. Well, this just happened to be the location of a church that I had an association with and which could uh, harbor me in in secret. Other than that, there, there's nothing particularly special about New Kamak, but it, it does appear that Farika's machinations are the reason why both I and my students are here and why the four of you are here as well. I suspect there is more that we don't know, but... It seems we've told each other all we can. Well, knowing that Farika, at the very least, is uh, either in in the city or at least uh, knows of the city correspondence chess game, that, that uh, if it's here, she knows that I'm here, uh, that, that does spare us, myself and my students, the trouble of going in search of our quarry. It seems that it's only a matter of time till they, they come here, probably to this church, to to try to, to kill me and my students. I mean, for starters, I'm no expert strategist. Perhaps somewhere other than the church. Well, I suppose it does offer certain protections against our kind. It, indeed it does. Um, Seems like the first place they would want to look, though. Well, my students and I have been training in preparation for a confrontation. A confrontation is, is exactly what we want. And hopefully this time we will be victorious. Uh, of course, if we have any leads on the locations or plans of Farika or any of the other horsemen, uh, it may also be wise to try to strike first. But for the moment, I suppose it's it's wiser without knowing much about where they are and what they're doing for, for me to remain here in the church, which offers me a, a degree of protection. Now, wait a minute. The, uh, the, the flying legless mushroom one... Is she is she one of these super super demons or whatever horsemen? Because no. uh, we got a lead on where she might be at. Is pestilence? Yes. Well, you, famine, pestilence, pestilence. All right. You have encountered the horseman pestilence. Oh yeah! Oh uh, yeah! Darby kicked its ass. Tore its legs off. It had to. It oh, had yeah. to um, ta- ta- he got what? the uh, a trophy of some sort. Oh, yeah, yeah, scope this oh, out. Yeah, uh, I mean, show the we necklace. kicked it that. Do you know anything about this thing? Uh, no, the, 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 Excavo and I didn't do much, but yeah. 
I was riding it, you know, it was flying, and, well, it, anyway, it's a long story. I got its necklace, scope it. I believe I may have seen it wearing that when I encountered it in Israel. You you destroyed this creature? Uh, it is slain? Mm, no, uh, no, I mean, it, it had to chop off its own legs to to shake me off. I was, I was going to get it for sure. But, uh, yeah, it, it escaped. But we know where it was at, and we heard it pretty bad, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe let's go, let's go finish the job. One of our oh. people is staking out its, its base of operations as of the time that we encountered it. Well, if you could, in fact, defeat the horseman known as Pestilence and bring back some sort of proof that would go a long way in establishing this... This new alliance between our groups. Well, we have. Well, we got a score to settle with that one, anyway. Proof. I've given you a, a lot of information to digest. A lot um, of exposition, absolutely. Quite a bit. Um, <laughs> it, do you have any questions for me? So many. Uh, I mean, well. I guess Archon Glass would be better to answer the question of why are we here of all vampires? But I thought I already answered that. They needed the very best vampires to be in charge of this high priority area, and so therefore we are here. I, I don't I don't understand what the what the problem is with that theory. Well it, it, Darby it does that me. <laughs> that does I lean into Darby and like that makes sense for some of us, yes, yes. It is because I brought us together. What? <laughs> they found me, I stepped into their trap, and I, it worked out. <laughs> is this a challenge that the four of you feel like you're you're up to? Confronting and defeating the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Well, I mean, if we leave town, uh, the Camarilla pretty much sentenced us to execution. So we're all we we're all you got. Yeah, is, we'll is do what it. He's well, trying to say so. Yeah, we we better be up to, up to the challenge. Otherwise, I mean, it's not just us. There's like uh, like the three other vampires here as well. Yeah, so they'll we're help like us out. Fourteen on ten, all right, or fourteen on four. Well, you <laughs> you are correct that we don't have much in the way of reinforcements to bring in. Um, I, I will not be bringing any more students under me or, or telling anyone else in my organization uh, about this threat. So for the Shouldn't moment... like the Pope know or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, can, does he have some kind of say in this? Well, as I said, my superior and his superior are informed of this, but um, uh, yeah. our ways... How far up in that chain is Jesus? Well, on, <laughs> on the very top, of course. I'll, I'll explain uh, our... I was just checking. I'll explain our policy um, thusly. We know that vampires can be feral, mindless predators, incapable of oh, thoughts okay. beyond satisfying their depraved urges. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. we're, we're right here. But others can be extremely patient, cunning, and convincing to the weak-willed. A supposed messiah who would destroy all vampires and bring the Lord Jesus Christ back to Earth has tremendous leverage to manipulate the minds of our hunters. If we send an army after Farika, surely a portion of that army will be manipulated into serving her and giving her knowledge of our operations. And for this reason, knowledge of Farika bint Nadal al-Mahdi is limited to only my team, my superior, and his. And if I am killed, another shall... Uh, I assume, take my place. And I I do want to say that despite her promises of saving the world from evil, I reject the idea that she is the fulfillment of prophecy, at least in the way that she claims. If anything, it could be argued that she was foretold in the Bible, but as the Antichrist. 
Did we just lose Blake? Blake, come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I am back now. Welcome back to I New Kicked Comic. Off. <laughs> okay, I'm sure I missed something of that. He was talking mm-hmm. about how some vampires are bad and some are good. Manipulative. Either, I, no, I, either some are bad in bad. one way and some are bad in a different, <laughs> I, like, well, more subtle it's, way. It's funny because yes. both of those w- uh, are represented in our team. Wait, no, <laughs> we're we're the good ones. I, d- don't listen to him. Hey, listen. And you're going to let us choose which side we're on. <laughs> can you guys see here? I can't see Blake. I can see I, him. Oh. I can see him. Oh, I, I can see to, me. I think I have to like refresh. Hold on one second. All right. So I, yeah, I, I got. Here's my question. Um, after we help you avoid the imminent threat on your life, and then mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. Are you just going to go back to just trying to kill me and my friends all the time, like, right away? Yes. That doesn't really seem like we should help you without some kind of promise that you're going to stop hunting us? No, well, such is the natural order. Besides Darby, we can tell Perhaps you uh, an arrangement could be made. All right, well, I got, I got business to settle with this, uh, with pestilence. Special vampire clemency. I've always wanted to have a vampire version of diplomatic immunity. Something I could really sink my teeth into. Okay. Uh, an, an arrangement could possibly be made, and uh, was not was that not going to happen? That, that that we would we would help you, and then you would just turn around and and kill us. Is that what was going to happen? Well, kind of sounds like it, since we got to negotiate for it now. Before. Also, <laughs> also, I want to say on our end that if we do the deal, then we won't kill you either. Yeah. Not I that really, we were going to, We did but not damn. even know about your, your, uh, your meaningless existence. Hey, so, isn't uh... it nice when we say it like that? Well, before tonight, we had not anticipated that we would be entering into an alliance with any vampires, so I I did not have any sort of arrangement already planned out, but this does seem appropriate. Father Palladian, we're not asking for a truce. We're not asking for a partnership or an allyship. <laughs> Give us a 10 second head start. <laughs> we're ask we're asking to be BFFs forever, maybe even oh, more than oh. friends. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I think that this might be an appropriate time for us to uh as they say exchange digits. Uh would would one of you kindly exchange phone numbers with uh, one of my students and Leonard. I put a cell phone in that robe. <laughs> when it, when he said that, I got a little glimmer in my eye, and I kind of like grab Augustine's shoulder. I'm like, he wants my number. <laughs> Augustine uh, or Archibald just wants approval and a friend, just positive relationships with people. Oh no, no! Like Unny and Jack is my friend. I want to date Father Palladian. <laughs> Is a silver fox. Uh, well, do you exchange? Uh, it's one of those with... enemies to lovers relationships. I insist what? I exchange my number first because okay, you know I you know <laughs> I, I knock both of their pieces of paper and pens out of the way. I write my <laughs> number. My on... good man, you mentioned not being willing to contribute the lives and bodies of your descendants. However. In this allyship, what are you offering as aid? Are you nothing more than a, a, a neutral entity at this point? What are you contributing here? I uh, I just say, Father, don't listen to him. I'm, I scrawl my number, and also on the paper, I write, call me, which is redundant because... It already ha- it has my number on it. And what else are you gonna do with that? <laughs> I get and I give it to him. And he doesn't really want it, so I give it to to Donna Teller. But then I say like, then it's for him. <laughs> okay. That don't get the note confused. It's for him. 
Darby misunderstood exchanging digits and is just like six. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Uh, yes, that's one we need. We need like <laughs> nine more. <laughs> Um, Six? I say it. What? Something distracts you uh, in the sky above the church. I, you I see look to the sky. What's that in the sky? Hark. A bird. A plane. <laughs> mm, it's bird-like. Is it a oh, bat no, signal? The, the horseman of pestilence. You Does it see, have legs? No, you see a beam of light being cast up in the night sky. You look up, and through the trees, you see a searchlight illuminating the overcast sky with a silhouette of a no! bat. No! It's the bat signal. No! Darby starts running through the car. We gotta go now. Father, great timing. I knew timing. this was gonna happen. Do you wanna go God get pestilence with us? That's our bat signal, by the way. Darby is pulling the car around. Like, he's he's making no... He's pissed that he's going to miss out on some of the action. He's hurrying as quickly as he can to get the car and start getting back to the abattoir. I'll text Father you Palladian the address. Says, I'll text you the address. He, I, I say shotgun, and I slide across the hood, Dukes of Hazard style. You got to roll for that? You just, you just, does, it, does it work automatically? Do I have to roll not... for sliding across the dashboard? What is my slide roll? Well, I guess it depends on if you're trying to accomplish anything with it. No, Just I'm not. I'm looking seat. fly as fuck. I'm looking cool. You do it. It's great. Cool. <laughs> Is that a... That's it. You do it. It's great. <laughs> Is that a drive roll? Do in the in the flurry of action, is there at any point where I have a quick moment to ask Father What's His Nuts um, about the... <laughs> Is that the what you call him? Is about that how the... you address him? Excuse me. Father, what's his nuts? Father, My good man, Father, what's your nuts? Um, <laughs> do I have what's time to doing? ask him I, I, if he has any information about Change the both the pentagram Tons. that we found in all the other ritual spots and uh, also to get an answer for the question I asked about whether or not he has dick to offer uh, as far as like, <laughs> well, because the fucking Chantry doesn't have military might and they refuse to help. Uh, he basically said he's not going to <laughs> offer military might. So, like, I have a couple questions regarding it. Do I have to, Do I have the opportunity to ask those before we dukes a hazard out of here? The the what he what he conveys to you is that uh, he doesn't know anything about the pentagram stuff, but he suspects that that uh, could be. Uh, famine's doing, Farika's doing. Uh, it could be part of something Something she's doing that's part of her grander plan. And he also says that for the moment, you can expect uh, information to be shared between the two of you. And if they get any actionable leads on the location of the horsemen, uh, they will be in touch. But for the moment... He's reluctant to expose his students to so much danger, especially having just met all of you. Oh, but did okay. you answer his question? Does he have dick to offer? Um, <laughs> and he is withholding <laughs> dick uh, from Augustine. Okay. Being uh, very, very stingy um, with the dick. Is this going to be like a conflict between Augustine and I? Are we fighting Maybe. over this particular love triangle? Finally, Darby's Give not in one of the love triangles. Given that I sprinted most of the way here, I can only assume several of the tomatoes in my pockets were mutilated in the uh, transportation of my body here. But it's I tragic. offer him, I offer him one of my mutilated tomatoes uh, as an unconfirmed sign of gratitude. Like I don't wait for him to receive it; I just hold it out, and when he presents anything, I just kind of drop it on his hand. Uh, also, and then I join like, the team. Since you are running over here so fast, you're like real sweaty and gl just glistening. Uh, I I am. Thank you for noticing. Okay, so we're off to the Abbott family abattoir. Yes, real room, room like. Uh, yes. yes. Okay, you you get there with the quickness, and as you pull up, you there's a there's a horse uh, in front of you. Uh, like near the entrance and you spook it and it canters off into the forest, but you still see does it visibly. Horse, does the horse have to be in front of us? Can we like... Can... What do you mean? 
He told Are you we... it was. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel it's in like front of us. That's if we're pulling into a driveway and there's suddenly a horse. I feel like yes. we would have seen it from it... further back. Can we like avoid so the horse? Further you pull in front of us. You pull up and you park, <laughs> and within t- twenty feet away, there is uh, a strange horse that goes ah oh, and runs off into the forest. And you, in the headlights, you get a good look at this horse. Um, it's a white horse, which you might remember was mentioned in Tenniel's journal, but it's not just white. Its skin is translucent and slimy like a jellyfish, and you can see veins and tendons underneath the skin, and its eyes are green and bloodshot, and as it canters away, it keeps kind of coughing and shaking its head. It's a weird fucked up horse. So uh, you all get out of the car and you look around and you don't see or hear John or Pestilence. I I want to burn for celerity and run after the horse. Like, I'm not I'm not waiting for I'm I'm going for it. Like, if I see a target when we get here, my first instinct is to jump out the car door and sprint after it as fast. Why aren't you just driving after it? Because he said we had gotten out of the car first. Okay. If your intention is to attack the horse, you would have had an opportunity to do that as you were pulling up, and you can, in fact, simply drive into the horse. I will let you roll for that. I would like to do that. Of course, I am good at driving. Um, I've never tried to use it as a weapon before. Um, this would be a fun first thing for my character to do. Yep. Um, this will be I... a wits plus driving for you. Three successes. Three Successes indeed. I was going to roll. Uh, this is going to be an opposed roll, your driving skill versus the horse's dodging skill. But uh, the horse doesn't actually have enough dice to possibly overcome three successes. Oh. So uh, as you rev the El Camino and hit this horse that just barely starts to notice you and starts trying to trot uh, out of your path... Um, you hit the hor- horse with such speed that in that split second, it looks like the legs just separate and snap off and go oh. under the car. And the rest of the horse gets kind of spread out in this uh, this wet, soupy mess across the windshield, over the car, uh, filling the bed the the oh, mullet no. of the El Camino, which I believe was Augustine Ag- in the mullet. Augustine is is in. Uh, He's just so, covered in protoplasm from this thing. Yeah, just horse bones, weird fungal smelling goo. Uh, not the normal insides of a horse, but uh, yeah, you have <laughs> at high speed disassembled this horse. Darby gets out and is only concerned for the car. Like, can't believe that this shit got all over the front of his car. Just like, oh, oh no, this is never going to come out. Darby, oh. we can hoover it when we get back to the manor. Look at the, oh, it's, it's melting into the paint. Oh, this is, this is disgusting. The smell, the smell is never going to go away. Oh, man, I got hiding smells now. Do you smell that? Oh, it's so gross. Augustine pops open the, uh, uh, the tailgates of the mullet of the El Camino, and uh, all of the goop sliding out uh, carries him like a tide out, <laughs> <laughs> out of the car. An ocean of horse. And uh, everyone is is clean except for Augustine, who's uh, pretty gross. So you look around, and you don't see or hear John or Pestilence. But after a few moments, you see a shape move across the night sky, and you realize that they are both high above the ground, battling apparently to the death. Uh, John is in his giant war form uh, as a a giant nine foot tall, 900 pound bat. Uh, He's flying with his arms and kicking and slashing with the talons of his feet, and the creature is flying with the wings that are on its back and punching and slashing with the claws on its arms. It looks like the creature would have been, uh, Pestilence, would have had a definite advantage in the fight if it had all four of its limbs. But 
Because of its fight with Darby, it only has two appendages for attacking, just like John. So they're fighting and they look evenly matched. You see John climb higher in the sky and then dive bomb the creature with his feet, slicing it through Pestilence's flesh. Uh, Pestilence grabs John by one of his feet and punches him multiple times in the face before getting kicked away. John swoops in and grabs the creature with his feet and starts trying to bite uh, Pestilence's head. But Pestilence starts flying in a tight circle, just like it tried to do with Darby, spinning faster and faster like an ice skater with John barely holding on. You see him spinning around high up in the sky. Pestilence then quickly grabs John by the foot and uh, with what looks kind of like aerial judo, throws John uh, off of it, um, hurling John uh, deep into the forest, careening through the trees, where you hear the sound of several trees cracking and falling as John's enormous body tumbles through them. A long moment passes, and John Tenniel has not yet emerged from the forest. Pestilence turns to face all of you, and slowly flies lower and lower until it's hovering about 20 feet off of the ground. Pestilence seems to scan over each of you and then stops at Darby. It points directly at Darby and then beckons him to come forward. Dar Darby did not need this invitation. Like at the moment that he came down closer to ground level, Darby was running at full blast. I mean, we can figure out initiative or whatever. I am my my intention is just and, and it's close to you know um, rot track or no, not the fear one, frenzy. It's close to frenzy. frenzy. It's not frenzy, but it's just like blood rage. He's so angry at uh, what happened to Tenniel. So angry that he missed the fight. He knew this was going to happen, and then Tenniel got beat when he wasn't here. He feels guilty. And so, yeah, uh, he's just charging blindly into the fight with, with no plan except to hurt this thing. Well, still about 20 feet up in the air, <clears throat> Pestilence starts slowly flying backward toward a larger clearing on the north side of the property, and it looks like it has a big smile on its face. It looks like... It's, it's slowly flying backward and creating distance between the two of you and uh, Augustine, Excavo, and Archibald. Sort of like, just you and me. We're going to do this over here. And it looks like it's, it's going to land the, on the first side. Darby's fine with that. He's like so, waving them. Check on, check on the, the yeah. bat guy. I think my reaction so, was to pretty immediately run towards Tenniel as well to check out that. I feel guilty is... for baseball batting him in the face. So we're we're <laughs> in a forest, though. Is that is that correct? We're in a forest. The Abbott family we're... abattoir is in. Uh, it's based. Uh, it's it was built on a in a large clearing uh, in the middle of. It's surrounded by a forest. Yes. So okay. Clearing, and you no. said he's about twenty feet in the air. Is that? Yep. Still true. He's deliberately okay. flying like just just out of range as he as he flies back to where he but, wants but, to where it wants to fight Darby. But but not above the height of trees. Uh <laughs> correct. Cool. <laughs> okay. Sneaky. <laughs> Dope. I think before I take off for Tenniel. I remark to Excavo, it's like, I was so excited about the rematch that I forgot to bring the ladder from home. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like, I guess I'll go check on John, and then I run off towards where John fell. Yeah, okay. I still don't have any weapons on me. This because, is correct, yes. Because I went in the library without any weapons. Oh, so, your your uh, weapons I, are in your car parked outside the library still. I give the hooky sword yep. thing, this the sickle to Excavo. Okay. Uh, this is you. not a toy. Thank you. So I'm, okay. I mean, I know what it is. So Archibald and Excavo <laughs> and Augustine, if he so chooses, uh, you run off uh, hopping over the river uh, in the direction of, of 
Tenniel. But no, let's say uh, he was thrown not in the direction where you have to cross a river. Uh, so um, your, your feet stay dry. I, I'm, I'm already gooey, so I'm, I'm pretty not worried about that. <laughs> okay. um, did, but... he, did the creature notice that his horse just got murked? At the time, it was fighting with Tenniel, and it did not notice. So, so quick question. So it it pointed at Darby, and it backed up to a clearing. Uh, how close is the nearest tree? To uh, Pestilence and Darby? Yeah. Um, there... So Pestilence looks like it is going to position itself... Uh, at the far north end of the property, uh, maybe 20 feet or more from the tree line. Not right up against the tree line. So, like, it's, but, it's a ways but, but away. But not, it, it, not right up against it, but not, like, too far away from it. Like You want to know if, if a tree l- is in range to, like, smack pestilence? Yes. Yes, I do. It looks like just just barely. If you got a, a the nearest tree to totally bend down and just uh, it would be in range. However, that power of yours requires that you touch that tree. And you are on, at this point, the opposite end of the clearing. You entered the far okay. south side and Darby and Pestilence are moving toward the far north side. So... So Augustine, in a fit of delight, uh, doesn't follow Archibald or Excavo. Um, God damn it. He, as sneakily and quietly and unnoticingly as he can, uh, skims the tree line to get to the tree's nearest pestilence. And he doesn't quite do anything yet other than just trying to get within touchy do range of... The trees range. Um, nearest the the flying granny do. Okay. Um, do, 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 all right, do, do, you do. you do that. It's going to take a couple turns to get there, but that is noted. Um, so Darby pestilence uh, flies up a little higher, uh, goes further back, and then relaxes its wings and falls to the ground with a heavy thud, bracing itself with its fists. Uh, it lands about 40 feet away from you. And then... Is that, is, what, is that power pose? Uh, sure. It, like, it, it just anime power posed. It is kind of a superhero landing. Um, <laughs> well, it doesn't have any legs, so it just has like stumps and fists to, to land on. Uh, it lands about 40 feet away from you, Darby, and then starts flying directly toward you. Its leg stumps skidding across the ground and just f- fucking ready for this fight just roaring at you and kindly roll for initiative all right i've never never rolled well on initiative zero times so what is your total 12 all right um so the two of you are about to meet you're running at it. It is flying real low to the ground, just skidding its its stumps across the ground. What uh, action do you declare? Okay. Um, my intention is to um, to grapple it and restrain it. I guess, yeah, I, I think I'm just, I'm running at it in blind rage. So I want to use my inertia to, to grab and grapple it. I I don't think that I have enough leverage to hurt it necessarily by doing this. I think I just want to like really secure my grip to it. Well, actually, so I you can, can attack use it. the the kind of confusing combat move called a clinch, where you are both holding it in place and doing damage to it. I, I think the way the clinch is described yeah. is uh, like a wrestling clinch where like two people are both holding each other. And at the same time, you are like twisting and squeezing and doing something to cause damage. And uh, if you successfully get a clinch, you automatically do damage as long as uh, the clinch is maintained. Uh, unless if your opponent successfully like gets out of the clinch. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So, and I get a second action, right, for my celerity. Uh, yes. If you are burning for celerity, you you do. So I'm trying to think of how this would work. Uh, so I'm trying to go for a clinch. Do I have additional? I think I want to go for a bite after that. Yeah, that's the move, right? I want to try to bite. Um, it does that? I, I read the fucking handbook over a year ago and i remember that this was the sauce so i am gonna try to clinch and then try to bite those are my two actions okay so pestilence seems to have a very similar idea it is flying at you with its uh with its arms out with its claws out like it's gonna grab you uh by like the shoulders um it's uh rolled a 15 and has a total of 15 in its uh, initiative, so it is going to attack first. It is also trying to clinch Darby. Uh, the cool thing about the clinch attack, I don't know if it's cool or not, but um, whoever initiates it does damage in successfully getting it, but then after that, both parties can do damage to each other equally. There's no particular advantage after that first turn of being the one who made the clinch happen. Can I oppose the clinch or that would take one of my actions? You can spend a willpower point to abort your clinch attack and instead try to dodge this clinch. No, that is I, I don't want to do that. Well, we can just try to clinch at each other, I guess. So uh, I'm going to roll the dice that pestilence has for this one success and uh due to potence that is being that blood is being burned for uh there's a total actually of more successes than that and enough to successfully get the clinch so damage will be rolled this is the damage roll for you that is two two successes this is two bashing damage oh i forgot to add two plus hang on one second two plus one uh three bashing damage which you can now roll to soak so what's my soak dice that is going to be your stamina plus fortitude which for you is five five dice soak two okay you receive one bashing damage uh that's cut in half i i think round down so you you take no damage just sh- shrug it off hell yeah yep but You're, i am clinched you you are we are now. in a clinch we are like we are in a clinch do i still have to use my action to do that now you like, can still work? do a clinch attack and do bashing do damage. damage to uh two okay ones. all right that's that's what i'm trying to do then i so guess it's uh, strength plus brawl Plus potence, right? Um, yes, if you're not burning for it. Not burning. Uh, I think that's actually six successes because I am grappling, which is my specialty. Minus one. Five. Five successes to clinch. Uh, now, please roll for damage your strength plus four dice. Okay. Plus potence or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you do add potence to that. Easy. That's a lot. Six or seven, depending on whether six, I get that specialty. Six successes. I, I think that does not apply to damage rolls. Okay, so you slam into it, and uh, you you find its giant frame uh, unyielding. It, it doesn't appear that you did any damage uh, by slamming into it and matching its, its clinch. Um, now you have a celerity action. All right. Uh, What's the dice for biting? Yeah, to bite, that is dexterity plus brawl plus one more die, which I think reflects the fact that you're holding on to it and thus it's it's easier to target. Two successes. Uh, Now for damage, uh, roll strength plus two plus potence. Three successes. Let's check real quick and see what this creature soaks. You bite into pestilence and your teeth 
tear through its uh, what part of the body do you bite it i think right for the neck i think uh, if that if that makes sense physics wise like i think i just grab it around its you know center and go for the most vulnerable thing i can get if I, if it's too tall to get the neck i think i probably go under its under its arm i'm going for like a juicy meaty part you you manage uh, by by virtue of the two of you slamming into each other and even though part of the clinch is like keeping each other at a distance uh you your heads nearly meet uh in that instance and you bite into its neck and you tear a chunk off of it and it's as gross as you would imagine hell yeah but also you get the satisfaction of seeing part of its insides uh you have a a definite hunk of its flesh in your mouth that you spit out and i and i say well, I if, if i'm able to I, I i talk shit about the horse i'm like you ain't much of a horseman with a <laughs> dead horse uh it doesn't have eyes but it more or less looks at you in your eyes and it hisses and then it says to you ik bin die plage die das leben frisst Die Pest, um deine Welt zu beenden. Bless you, motherfucker. And then uh, Augustine is halfway to his destination. Excavo and Archibald have not yet found John Tenniel, but they're following the sounds of something thrashing around in the forest. Uh, Next round, what are your intentions, Darby? Okay, I am going to do an abrupt change in strategy because that's what Dar- Darby is all about. Um, and I am going to try to dodge my opponent's incoming attack. I think he's going to try to attack me again. Maybe incorrect about this. But I am going to use my first action to completely dodge out of the way of his attack and uh, try to bite him again. Okay, so you're still maintaining the clinch, but if like... If he tries to bite me or if he tries to attack me, if he tries to do anything except for squeeze the clinch, then I am going to try to dodge it. Okay. And I am trying to get, I'm going to use that momentum to set up my celerity action. Like that's, that's the idea is to lean one into the other. And then what is your celerity action going to be? Uh, bite him again? Bite, bite him it again. again? Yes. Bite that's very creature. ambiguous pronouns. It is bite a monster. Them. I am going to bite them. It's grabs you by the shoulders and pulls you in for, indeed, a bite. Uh, Go ahead and roll dexterity plus athletics for a dodge. Four. All right. So it lunges at you. Let's see how it does. That looks like three successes to me. It's three. All right. It lunges at Darby, and Darby successfully dodges out of the way and then uh, attempts another bite give me another dexterity plus brawl plus one roll one two three four five six seven i think i get my specialty on this i think oh, this no, does no, maybe not, not count as grappling yeah, uh, whatever it's fine four. six yeah. is a lot and for damage uh please roll strength plus potence plus one plus five so strength plus potence plus six jesus strength plus potence plus six yes uh, so that's seven plus six 13 my god it's having a lot of trouble rolling the dice i broke it darby's too strong oh man not very good rolls three successes and let's see how it soaks two so as consequence you Pull it in, you manage to get at its neck once again, and you pull out uh, another uh, fist-sized chunk of flesh from it. And it roars in absolute annoyance. That's what I'm going for. We're at the end of round two, and Augustine has uh, arrived at uh, the nearest tree, but it'll be the next round when he can actually do something magical with it. Darby, uh, rinse and repeat. Still, still trying to bite this thing's head off. Uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm burning for celerity one more time. Let me knock my blood down, and um, 
I think this time I would like to go for... Can I Can I do two bites? I expect him to attack me again and again. I'm just trying to keep him off balance, okay. doing something different each time. Uh, and so this time I want to meet his bite with like bared fangs and uh, just bite him right back and then go for another one. Uh, the biting seems to be working, so I'm leaning into it. This is a, essentially a, a very violent makeout session at this point. That's right. That's right. And... Uh, I'm doing it the way I like it, not the way he likes it, for the record. Okay. I'm in there with some pressure, and when I'm done, he's not the same as he was before. He's changed. changed. So it lunges at you for another bite. Not good rolls. Two successes. You'll love to see it. Now I get to try to soak. Or no, he has to roll damage. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, it has to roll for damage. So it'll actually be four plus one, two, three, so seven. That's a lot. It's that... uh, it's a bunch. Um, Darby fortunately has uh, fortitude, if I'm not mistaken. So two dots he does, does, which are handy. So r- go ahead and roll two dice to soak that damage. I I don't get to add my stamina to this one because it is aggravated damage. You can only use fortitude to soak it. Oh, okay. Where am I being attacked? Uh, in the neck. Okay. All right. Actually, more, let's say shoulder. Just so they do Okay. It. In the shoulder. The arm. One. Six aggravated damage seems seems like a lot. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so this is what happens. Pestilence slams its jaws down on your upper arm, and you feel its teeth... Uh, ripping your flesh apart and splintering your bone. It rips your left arm completely off and Mm, spits it out onto the grass, leaving a a ragged, bloody stump. But with your right arm, you are still attached to it. And the clinch, uh, I don't believe it says in the books that you have to have two arms to do a clinch. Uh, So... It's it's still on. Always and, be clinching. <laughs> uh, so at the moment, ABC. you have a dice pool penalty of five. But yep. give me a roll for a bite attack. It's going to be your dex plus brawl minus four. All right. Two successes. And... Uh, also roll for damage. That is going to be strength plus potence minus four. Uh, uh, minus three, actually. Oh, yeah. Whoo. Oh, man. Spicy. He's making it interesting. In nearly the exact same moment that your arm is being torn off, Pestilence flings it uh, into the field, onto the grass, and in that moment, exposes the other side of its neck. You <laughs> take this opportunity. Even though you just lost your arm, you're in this battle trance. And Darby uh, latches on to not only Pestilence's uh, neck, but also a, a good chunk of the musculature and the collarbone. Darby bites down and gets the collarbone and as he rips it away, the whole collarbone comes off and a, a big chunk of flesh comes with it. Ugh. Jesus, just doling out the egg. One, two, three, four. And it looks like that that arm on Pestilence has, uh, it's still there. It's still working, but it's gotten noticeably weaker. Uh, and now you have a second bite that you can do. Um, I'm yeah, going for it. Yep, I believe it was a uh, dex plus brawl. Oh, you got it. Oh! Oh. <laughs> Still one, su- one, su- one success. One success. Okay. And one uh, roll your one's damage. One's enough. <laughs> oh, no. None this time. Didn't get there. So Darby uh, just giddy about tearing a big, important chunk out of Pestilence goes for another bite and lands it but darby's mouth was is still full of collarbone and viscera and did you hate it when that happens yeah end of round augustine versus tree we'll do that first quick assessment question 
Sure. How the fuck far has their battle taken them from me? Not far enough that the very top of the tree can't dip down and reach Pestilence and Darby. Cool. Augustine takes his tomato lubricated hands, spits a little bit in both, and... And clasps one of the trees, pops of blood, and cast Awaken the Forest Giants. Oh boy, this is one of your, your big power moves. Big boy spell. I, I do things. You will need to make a willpower roll against a difficulty of uh, 5 plus 3 is 8. Willpower doesn't suffer from any of the debuffs I'm dealing with currently, correct? Oh yeah, uh, you are down 1... So it'll be your willpower minus one dice. Yeah, boy. Two successes. Two successes. Whoa. We're doing magic, boys. What do I have here for trees? Um, hmm. We're going to have to leave a placeholder for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is snowing. <laughs> oh, yes. This is very on brand. <laughs> Merry Christmas, oh everybody. This is the holiday special. <laughs> Please roll intelligence plus occult minus one. Oh, no. Still two successes. Two successes means that this tree will stay animated for two turns as long as you spend two blood in order to animate it that long. Oh, baby, and you better believe I fucking do. Uh, and as soon as it's animated... It'll follow your verbal commands to the best of its ability. I point specifically at Pestilence, and the the command I give is crush while pointing at Pestilence. So Darby, get the heck out of Dodge. Like, fun fact. I, I have uh, no idea that you're doing this, but good luck. Okay. You say crush uh, in the general direction of both Pestilence and I, Darby? <laughs> I try and I try and specifically point at pestilence, but I have no idea where the French fuck uh, the eyes on a tree are. So I'm like, so maybe you could describe it clearly with your words. <laughs> yeah, how many words can you use? Is Be a fucking a magician, for God's sake! He, he can have a whole conversation with it. Oh crush. well, then why has he been doing this one word thing? <laughs> it's not crush. dominate. He's so verbose every other moment. <laughs> <laughs> crush the winged beast. There you go. Yeah. That's the ticket. Um, and yeah, I thought you could only do one word. That's why I was confused. <laughs> it, it, it will follow verbal commands, but my ex my past experience with other plants is that they are not like uh, intelligent speaking to. So oh, I'm for sure. To, um, but just as a heads up, uh, a component of this spell is when the duration of my spell's potence wears out, it plants roots wherever the fuck it is. Yeah. So, like, if it slams a foot on you and Pestilence, and my two rounds are up, it will just root in place. I'll be fine. Ain't no tree ever <laughs> held me bound. So, uh, Augustine does his gestures and incantations, touches this tree, points, and says, crush. And this entire tree, it, it looks like a lumberjack had just felled it in fast motion. Uh, but it's it's not severed at the bottom or anything. At its its very base, it just bends like a giant pool noodle and slams down on the ground oh. right next to Pestilence and Darby, uh, making like putting itself a foot into the ground with the impact. It's thunderous and it it misses uh, the the two of you, unfortunately. Poop and butts. What the fuck was that? End of round. I'm going to take a one minute break real quick. Hold on. I have a brawl of one. What's my dex? My dex is three. He rolled three dice so that m he might have done brawl plus dex for this. Because that yep. would. <laughs> yep. That, that's what you did? <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, the, the strike is brawl plus dexterity. Mm. You're right. I cheated you out of one die. It should have been four dice. Uh -oh. Brawl plus... Because I wouldn't apply your nightmare penalty to to the tree. A tree. Unless yeah. I just traumatize that plant. You want to roll one die? Yes, I will absolutely do that. 
Because you started with the two and my pencil mark was too light. Uh, yeah, so that attack should have been with one more die, uh, which I will roll, roll right now. Oh, shit! Oh, oh <gasps> yes! Wait, oh, you made it? Oh, man. I actually have one success. It hit something. A thing. A desirable thing. That's... Yay. I, we desperately need Darby back so we can mm -hmm. update, but... Oh, that's exciting. I'm finally not useless. Thanks thanks for checking on that. Keep me honest. No, no, you're fine. I was just trying to, like... Because you, you did the roll, and I was like, I don't know what dice pool he's looking at. Like, Yeah, I was just confused. I appreciate you listening in and, you know, letting me help run that down. Yep, yep, yep. Yeesh! Uh, whatever opposing role you just did is not it's great. Three successes. Yep. Why are you rolling two. all them dice over there? We'll wait till everybody else comes back to reveal what the, the actual results are. There's been an update. Uh, Darby, I actually rolled one fewer die than I was supposed to for that tree roll. And we rolled... One extra die, and it came up a success. The tree does, in fact, hit its target, and it oh. slams oh, into no. pestilence. Oh, yay! Because you're so far away from the base of the tree, it's only the very top of the tree that's kind of reaching yeah. uh, the two of you. Uh, it, it whacks pestilence with kind of a baseball bat-sized branch, and it... Uh, seems to distract it for a minute and and do some sort of very very superficial damage but a tree does slam down next to you and and smack pestilence successfully oh without any very dramatic consequences of that but you did it darby you are quite mangled you are down one arm uh are you going to continue trying to take out what appears to be the the last of this creature's uh, health with some more bites. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm not even really registering much thought at this point. Like, I think I took so much damage um, that all I can think about is is just continuing to gnaw through what I've started on. Um, and I think that even the celerity is kind of instinctive at this point. Like, I'm just keeping my my adrenaline maxed out and just chowing down got it it has the same idea it dives in for a bite three successes there Let's see what that damage is it'll be four plus one uh darby go ahead and roll uh two dice to see where you soak all of it mm. So this is what happens next. <clears throat> uh, the creature pestilence having bit into your left arm and tore it off. It's looking at your right arm. It dives in. Same thing. Uh, pestilence sinks its fangs deeply into your arm, piercing the bone and rips it away with tremendous force. The your right arm is torn completely off as well as your shoulder and a large portion of your chest is ripped away along with it, kind of diagonally down to your hip. OK, and everyone sees Darby fall to the ground, uh, rendered completely incapacitated by the tremendous amount of damage that his body is, has suffered. And. Excavo and Archibald are still in the forest. Uh, Augustine, are you still trying to command your tree? Yeah. The new... If I'm able to give a new command... Well, it would uh, be... you will in, in a moment. First, you see sure. Darby... Uh, another arm just fly off of Darby and arc through the air and land in the grass. And you you look over and you see as Darby goes limp... The horseman pestilence plunges its clawed hand up inside Darby's rib cage and picks up Darby and then hurls him 
in the direction of the El Camino. Uh, Augustine, you have one how, more command for your for your tree. How far does Darby appear to land, like fly? Does he actually make it basically to the El Camino? Like, yeah, yeah, basically. I'm torn between giving an entangle command and just seeing what destroy does, but. With my luck with ambiguous commands. It doesn't have to be just one word. It can you can give a whole sentence to it. Yeah. You can say however much you want, apparently. So there you go. Skewer the winged beast! Entangle him in your branches, you majestic bastard. Um <laughs> Now, skewer and entangle are two different things. Do you want it to to stab, stab the pestilence? Stab the branches through, and then as soon as the branches are through, r- continually wrap and like try and stop it from moving. So stab and grab. It has two. It has one turn left, and I'm gonna say that you can either command it to try to hold pestilence in place. Or to try to do damage to Pestilence. Did we have any prior indicator that Pestilence was low on health? Yes, I beat the shit out of it. Yeah, parts have been (laughs) torn off of it very visibly. Then I definitely give the stab command, and I generally gesture at the heart and the brain. (laughs) Okay, uh, go ahead and roll four dice for me for the tree's dexterity plus brawl. Fuck. Unfortunately, uh, what you see is the tree having just slammed down, uh, kind of adjacent to Pestilence, smacking it a little bit. It rears up and tries to... It, all the branches, they look like they form kind of a hand, like they're going to try to grab Pestilence. And it flops up and slams down just on the other side of Pestilence, just missing the creature entirely and at the end of that round it roots and it's it's entirely not touching pestilence like no part of the tree is touching pestilence when it roots it's it misses pestilence and it's already rooted where it was it was just reaching over to to pestilence but now uh its magical animation seems to go inert and it really slowly goes back to its normal shape it's normal configuration yeah, it vertical is, is my entire turn consumed by giving the command or do i have like an actual action you can do at least a movement uh what, what do you want to do you can probably do it i am definitely <laughs> uh as hard as my geeky ass can carry himself sprinting towards Darby and trying not to get nabbed by fucking pestilence. Yeah. Um, but definitely, like, dashing my ass there and trying to throw his ass in the car. Yeah, you can definitely do, like, a C-shaped run around the edge of the clearing and avoid pestilence. Archibald and Excavo, you see just uh, a row of broken trees and John Tenniel kind of stuck underneath one of them he's trying to get up but his uh having like stuff landing on your big ass wings uh makes it kind of awkward to get out and he sees you and he brother i could use a hand here i give him a hand all right darby's with uh (laughs) with the help of archibald and excavo you get uh, a big fallen tree off of John Tenniel and uh, he just bolt, he starts running through the forest and he jumps and he kind of disappears. He just shoots through the canopy. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we go that way. I think we follow him so, to see where he's going. Yeah. You two emerge from the yeah. forest. You see uh, that Darby has, uh, sailed through the air and landed near the El Camino. You see Augustine running up in your direction and you see uh, a very mangled but alive pestilence ascending into the air and flying toward the three of you with what looks like a big smile on its face. And it starts slowly just moving closer and just looking at all of you like, uh, like you're a big tasty snack. 
but with a crack, it suddenly smacked out of the sky and it slams hard against the large building that was housing the farm's pigs. John Tenniel is hovering in the air, silhouetted against the moon, having finally emerged from the forest. John Tenniel swoops down and clamps his feet onto Pestilence's wings. And with labored, powerful strokes of his wings, John flies, exactly, uh, flies far up into the sky with Pestilence's wings grasped in his talons far up into the sky before dive bombing the two of them directly downward. Together, they slam into the earth, their impact shaking the ground, and both lie broken in a small crater of loose dirt, nearly incapacitated, when Pestilence leaps on top of John and starts furiously clawing at his chest, stabbing and digging and audibly slicing John's flesh apart. You see it similar to what it did with Darby. You see it plunge its hand into John's chest. John furiously kicks Pestilence off of him with all of his might, sending Pestilence in the direction of the forest. And this requires a quick roll. John successfully aims Pestilence at the nearest tree, which it slams into with a tremendous crack that echoes through the forest. Pestilence falls limp a couple feet off of the ground, impaled through the chest by a broken tree branch. Pestilence's head falls limp and its arms dangle at its side and its fists unclench and from its hand falls a dark red object. It is John's heart. Have I reached Darby at this point? Um, in a stammering, uh, incomprehensible panic that otherwise, to the naked eye, might seem like affection, but to Augustine is just panic, uh... <laughs> I delicately and hurriedly chuck his body into the mullet of the El Camino. I am I'm getting in the car. I'm getting ready to gotcha. dash this this corpse to the chantry, and I'm not really asking them if they're coming along. Gotcha. You're doing this without grabbing the heart? Uh no, I'm grabbing the Darby, the thing I dashed across the the, the glen to grab. Uh, let me let me interject here. Uh, Excavo, could you please give me a willpower roll, difficulty nine? Got it. One. So one. One success. So, Augustine, as you pick up Darby's body, uh, which is very mangled, it, it's missing a couple arms, and it is slowly sinking in on itself as Darby's muscles wither. His skin turns gray and tightens. His eyes sink into their sockets and his nose starts to collapse. Before your eyes, Darby begins turning to ash. Am I noticing, like, is this like a, a plant oriented? Is this like a fungal thing? He just, he, he just got so fucked up that Darby is actually dying. It is the rapid version of the decay that any human corpse undergoes, and it is what happens after a vampire meets its final death. Would giving him some of my blood do anything to prevent this? You have no reason to believe that it would. Would telling... Taunting him with the possibility of me... Muffler fucking his cars. Okay. Bring him back to One life. One good way to get haunted, but... Well, fuck a duck. And this is what it's the bad. other the other PCs <laughs> see as well. I feel like I would be very uncool with this, but no part of it would be directed towards helping Darby. I My sledgehammer's out, and I am going... 
to finish this thing off if it's not finished. And if it is already dead, I am wrecking it beyond any recognition. I think, in fact, I would even be at risk of like a frenzy right now. Uh, does anyone else follow Archibald to uh, the, the staked against a tree pestilence? No. I am still, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm not convinced that he's dead yet. Um, I think it might be the trauma Wait, of yes. Yes, uh, being worried that I suddenly give a shit about this douche nozzle. Um, but I'm definitely- Former trying, douche nozzle? I'm still definitely trying to put his body in the El Camino and okay. uh, all things permitting, as soon as he's in there- Assuming he's not just a pile of ash, of uh, punching it and okay. getting to the chantry as fast as I can. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Excava, That's fine. you have uh, your comma, your your sickle. Are are you following uh, Archibald no? to oh, to best yeah. Uh I am. Um, I part of me sees that heart, and I want to bring it to its rightful owner. <laughs> That's so sweet. Please give me another willpower roll. <laughs> Difficulty. Nine. This will be six dice for you. I see two successes. Mm hmm. Oh my god. No. <laughs> so, Archibald and Excavo, you approach this tree where this monster is, is hung up like a coat uh, right in front of you with uh, a bloody branch protruding from its chest and it is completely limp and as you approach it you feel a strange sensation the universe vibrates and you're filled with the understanding that this creature cannot be killed through normal means you don't like hear a voice but the knowledge comes to your mind as if you just learned it from a trustworthy source and it tells you that Like the fungus that it's covered with, this creature will regenerate and return to life if a part of it remains, specifically if its soul remains. The only way to kill it permanently is to destroy its soul. And the only way to do that is to consume the soul. This is something, this is knowledge that enters your mind. Okay, I eat its soul. I want to eat its soul. We split the soul, <laughs> and we both eat the soul. Uh, I want. Lady, lady, in the tramp, the soul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you're talking about committing diablerie, which is uh, sucking out all the vampire's blood, and then you keep sucking until the last little bit of its blood, which contains the soul, comes out, uh, that is something that. Only one of you can accomplish. Do you do you both attempt this? Yeah, I I would attempt because it's like a race. I think I think it's I think I, you know obviously I have to I have to be the best. I could totally consume someone's soul better than anyone we're, else. We're both sucking real <laughs> hard, just trying to get that last so little drop. Like crazy straw, just <laughs> it's like yeah, I brought my straw for this. <laughs> so the next question is do either of you interfere with the other one attempting this we're like having a little slap fight while- <laughs> Diablery is like a major violation of the Camarilla like- oh yeah it's worth noting that this is yeah. the, the worst sin uh, at least in like the Camarilla's sin- sense of morality uh, well this thing isn't like a dang vampire is it yeah this yes. creature doesn't follow it functions the by vampire rules already <laughs> It's staked in front of you. All right, I'm sorry. I'm dead. It is. It... Yeah, dead people don't talk. You have sufficient oh, reason to think that this thing... Oh, because it's staked is why it is? Yeah, uh, you have sufficient reason to think that this thing is, in fact, some exotic sort of vampire. Presumably, oh, yeah. that German oh, yeah. witch got yeah. embraced. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it is worth noting that Diablery is uh, considered the, the, the worst possible sin because if you consume someone's soul then that soul does not move on to the afterlife uh you are like killing 
not just them in this plane of existence, you're killing them forever. Uh, but on rare occasion, Diablerie is uh, sometimes condoned by the prince of a city and uh, as a reward for hunting down a dangerous criminal or... I mean, this seems like... Uh, I am the prince. This thing just has committed lots of big bad things. This is trying to like take over the world right now. I feel like if it's within my executive power as prince, then yeah, it's this is getting it. And especially if I I'm like in the, the right of zone. prima nocta. <laughs> okay, so hearing this sort of voiceless voice that that tells you that this is necessary are the two of you trying to keep the other one from uh from accomplishing this excavo you can do the honors fine oh. i i continue <laughs> i'll be chivalrous about it so excavo diablerizes oh my god the, the horseman pestilence Damn. Oh, oh my god. I'm doing it. I'm doing <laughs> now it. she committed the bad sin and not me. You know, you get to go down a generation. Mm, let me let me get to that. Part. Maybe. Oh. Uh, Would I know the consequences of this? In fact, it is part of your derangement that you not only know that if you diablerize a more powerful vampire... Uh, that you will possibly inherit some of that that power by lowering your generation. But you sometimes have a, a hard time resisting the urge to do this if you have an opportunity to diablerize someone who is uh, more powerful than you, reasoning that they don't deserve that power, you do. You should write Oh, yeah, them. absolutely. Um. Abs- I absolutely would. So, uh, you... Fight into the Horsemen of the Apocalypse pestilence I knew and, this. Draw, and draw foul-tasting blood out of the creature. It is the filthiest blood you have ever tasted, but you still get an extra jolt of rapturous satisfaction that comes from drinking vampiric blood. You fill your blood pool, <laughs> blood pool completely full, <laughs> and then you suck and spit out the remaining blood in Pestilence's body. Then you latch on and start pulling out the last few drops of that disgustingly tantalizing blood. You are uh, overwhelmed by an orgasmic euphoria and need to make a self-control roll at a difficulty of 10 minus your own humanity, which is 7. So uh, difficulty of 3. To maintain control as you feel your generation lower from 12th generation to 8th generation. Hmm. Oh, dip. Dang. Oh, don't fail me now. It would be so statistically unlikely to fail this. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Got, <laughs> got it. You you feel this flood of euphoria that you have never experienced before. You have never diabolized anyone, so you didn't know that uh, it's indescribably pleasurable. But you keep yourself together, you hold it together, and uh, you avoid falling into frenzy. So, um, uh, Augustine, I want to I want to add this note here as you're moving. You were moving Darby and you were seeing Darby's body decompose around his neck. He, despite the arms being torn off, he he still managed to just barely have that necklace with the glass vial on it. But as you're moving his body and this vial is like right up in your face, you notice that there's something different about the glass vial now. There is something in that vial. Hell yeah. You look closely at it and you see bits of flickering light. It's now half full with a very dark red liquid that's nearly black. And you see tiny tendrils of what looks like smoke swirling around on the surface of this liquid and glowing with a faint pale green light. 
as you're studying this very strange substance inside this glass vial and the way the smoke moves around on its own like octopus tentacles, you see the smoke briefly form into a familiar shape. In the smoke trapped inside this vial, you see Darby's face. That's where we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs> oh, no! Help me! Oh, I wanted to lop its head off real quick, too. Help me. Okay. Yeah, you, you'll uh, have the opportunity. I'll have the chance, yeah. Oh, my God. No, is Darby gone? Well. Well, I guess not. He's in a jar now. It's a Jarby. He just became a, a car air freshener. Oh Goodbye, God, arms. Yeah. Hello, jar. So the consequences of that will have to be explored. I the implications guess we'll see. of what might be in this glass vial. Uh, there is, there's John Tenniel's body. There is Pestilence's body. Uh, there's... The ultimate sin. There's what... Excavo just went through. There's Darby's corporeal body that still remains. Uh, a lot to dive into in the next session. Also, starting with the next session, we will be entering the next act of this story. Oh. Uh, a tremendous amount of exposition has been delivered. You now understand that your enemies, the true enemies of this campaign, are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and you just killed the first one. Uh, so thank you Darby for sacrificing yourself oh in this God. endeavor seriously went out the way I, I, I died the way I lived so um, and to Excavo for committing bad crimes starting with the next session uh, in act two um, we're going to drop it down from uh, every session giving you a base of three experience points down to two and in the okay. third and final oh. act it'll be It'll be one experience point per session. Uh, but this time, everyone gets three experience points. And starting with Archibald, you have five points. Would you like to spend them on anything? No bonus point for killing a horseman? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just did a lot of stuff. Everyone has four points. Yes! Achievement ah! XP! Games Even in points. death, Darby is obnoxious. I don't know why I didn't. Especially I didn't since it, is he gone? Especially that remains since, to be seen. Uh, well, A, I don't think I did anything uh, level up worthy right now. And also, I'm going to save it because we're going to start getting less. So I'm not going to level up anything right now. Roger that. Uh, Augustine, you have eight points. You're going to save that up for some, some thaumaturgy? I mean, even if I go down a little bit by next session, I could almost have enough for... Uh, my next uh, my next thaumaturgical thing would be like, what, 10 points? Well, uh, there, there are two ways you can advance thaumaturgy. You can buy another point, uh, the first point of a new path, or which, it, which would cost seven points. Or you can increase your thaumaturgy rating, your general thaumaturgy rating, from five to six, which would take 25 points. Uh, and as Oh, a, God, if I, if, I had, if I had known that, and as God, a bonus, I'd be... if you do that, you will get a free uh, dot in the path of your choice. And also any rules that you make that are that depend on your thaumaturgy rating, you will roll uh, six dice instead of five. So there, there are two different paths uh, you can take. Only... I mean, the 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 latter sounds really tasty. Um, I'm sure you at some point told me about that. Uh, and I just, being a dingus, missed it. Um, have I already increased my brawl you have. in this campaign? Three sessions. Then I will did. hold. Okay. Uh, I would like to save for being the most dope at thaumaturgy and uh, m you know manipulating reality. 
<laughs> uh, Excavo, you have 11 points. Would you like to spend them on anything? Well, and doesn't her character sheet just undergo some upgrades based on what just happened? Yeah, higher, my higher blood pool. Your blood pool and the amount of blood that you can spend per turn have gone up. By how much? Uh, it tripled, I think. You used to only be able to spend one, and now you can spend three. Correct. Oh. And your blood pool is now 15 instead oh of god. 11. Oh my god. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm going to do that all the time. <laughs> Once you pop, you can't stop. I mean, my character is kind of built for this type of sin. Yeah, it's a good thing the prince didn't try to body you on this. He probably <laughs> would have come at him pretty strong. <laughs> I am the best at this. Aha. Okay, and I have 11 points. I I think I'm good for now. I can't really think of what I'd want to upgrade. Okay. And if you think of anything, you could tell me between sessions. And uh, Darby, I suggest that you hold on to your 13 experience points until the next session. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just chill. Hard to spend experience when you're dead. Well, guess I'll just die? I can't um, believe Darby <laughs> died this episode. Jesus. The stakes are real and not just the one that went through oh. pestilence. Stakes were made. So what do we think about this this last session here? Um, I'm sad about Darby. I want to know what happened. Yeah, like what is that? It's it a, he's just yeah, in a, a hell of a, a hell of a cliffhanger. Uh, I mean, so the Chantry obviously knows about this artifact, and now that I see Darby's dumb face, okay, okay. Uh, we Why are we so mean? <laughs> yeah, seeing <laughs> seeing the uncalled for. Model Look, gives us hope uh, I think even Darby would fine. agree. Like. We, his face was really fucking dumb. Like, come on. He, he carried me in the MKT. I'm carrying his dumb ass when he's a uh, mostly mutilated corpse. Why are you always such a dick to Darby? <laughs> Why is Darby always such a dick to me? Oh, That's no, how he, he expresses he love. Really? Yeah. <laughs> then likewise. Um, but I think... I think that Chantry will have some thoughts on having Darby's face in a, a, a knickknack. <laughs> and whether he goes back into his old body or it gets forced into a new one or becomes a car air freshener that, you know, inhabits a car that I abuse. Okay. Um, oh, God. That would be Darby's hell. It could be anything. <laughs> oh. We could tie him to Onion Jack. Okay. And, give, All right. and give one of his nicest Fine. cars to Onion Jack. Just, really just, just to put his soul in into life. Onion Jack's body. Perfect. <laughs> this is Perfect what Darby game. would have wanted. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just constantly like, get me out of here. In general, uh, very interesting. Lots of information. I'm glad we got here. This is mostly the stuff that I remember. I didn't want to. I knew the horsemen were coming. I didn't want to say anything to anybody. I remember John Tenniel. Um, I remember Palladian. There, there's a couple more quirks of, of you played uh, Palladian, new... I think. In I the, did in the LARP version 15, 16 years ago. I did. Um, oh, and I, I played a few characters, but um, some you haven't met yet. I think you but played yeah, most of the one of the like the main pirate realtor as well. Yes, I was the <laughs> really the, when people realized what that was all about. Uh, still, some fun surprises with the pirates to come. I think, um, and there's another oh. faction that that you haven't met yet. I think. Well, there's the I biker gang and the meth people. But I think we we're mostly people. at the end of of where my previous experience could have like spoiled or messed with stuff. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Actually, this is uh, almost exactly near the end of of where the uh where the larp ended i believe in the pestilence fight it was patrick carney's character that diablerized pestilence it played out very very similarly he would 
Um, you... So what do you I all, would. how do you all feel about the reveal that this is, uh, you're fighting the four, the purported four horsemen of the apocalypse and trying to uh, save the world of vampires and maybe the world in general. Didn't see I'm, that one coming. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm glad that a lot of these tangential things have come together because yeah. keeping track of, you know, this over here, that over there, just kind of tying everything together and giving us mm-hmm. all a clear path forward for even just for a little bit. Yep. How many I was saying it was coming. Days, be good. How many game days away are we from Saturday? I think this is Monday. Okay, good. So I have like five that. days to get ready to beat. Oh, uh, yeah. Like how far away is Saturday? Uh, oh, this is... Uh, because this is... It's it's weird because this is at night and every night begins on one day and ends on another. Mm-hmm. Uh, this session began midnight at the beginning of Tuesday. Okay, April so April twenty eighth. So it's Tuesday. So. Tuesday yes. into Wednesday. So I was like, now that we know exactly who we're dealing with, and I know exactly who F is. Uh, this is intimidating because I feel like I've uh, gotten myself into uh, maybe more than I can chew off if she actually shows up. And it, is like, it is now... she really just gonna like play chess? I mean, <laughs> I know I can beat her at chess. I just don't know if I can beat her at vampire stuff. Mm. Um, and is it now clear the whole story of why? Uh how how like why you all ended up in new Kamak that uh famine was um was weakening the power structure in the city delacroix fucked up delacroix was a uh like a, a favorite uh pet sort of of archon glass who was held up as a shining example of like look how good the people under my command do and when delacroix fucked up archon glass had to kind of do a cover-up and keep information about, about that fuck up from getting out and instead swap in some patsies who we could later check in on and say oh look how much you guys fucked up not my guy, you guys. I nothing reflects badly oh, on me. Okay. Oh, see, I thought it was even more insidious. I thought Archon that Glass was working sense. with with the bad guys that he had set us up here to fail on purpose. That he put the the motley crew you see in front of you uh, in position to try to deal with this huge threat, so that we would fail. Wait, well, so that means that. Hmm. Um, does Archon Glass and the Camarilla not actually know the true nature of the threat then? Nothing has given you that impression except possibly for Archon Glass saying that there's like a situation in the Middle East. Uh, but that could be a coincidence. It could not be. There's a lot that is uh is unclear about what exactly Archon Glass's motivations are, what his whole deal is. But from what you learned from Prince Delacroix and from what you learned from Father Palladian, it's uh it looks like um that th- that's that's the the best information that you you have to go off of right now. That you uh that Delacroix fucked up because he was uh essentially uh, cursed by famine and mm-hmm. you were brought in because Archon Glass didn't, he told everybody up. how Delacroix was such a great prince and used him as a really valuable pawn. And then when he was catastrophically fucking up, uh, it was at least Delacroix's suspicion that you were brought in to take the blame for all of that. So none of that would bubble up and embarrass uh, Archon I Glass. See. Well, there could be more to it, but that is at least the most complete picture that you have from all of your information sources. But like, isn't, aren't we still under Archon Glass? So if we mess up, it'll still make him look bad? Potentially. He he hasn't spent, you know, years talking about how awesome we are True. to other people. True. Yeah. 
Not our guy. So they, he was going guy. to say, yeah, oh, Prince even... Delacroix got promoted to deal with this situation. Okay. He, he could be spinning at that. It wasn't even his idea to bring you guys into the city. And he has yet oh. another patsy to blame that on. If stuff, it's all, it's all chess. It's how the Camarilla works. It's just all chess, pawns. Huh? And... Yep. All right. This was a really heavy session. Um, mm-hmm. And I look forward Wrecked. to the next one. Mm-hmm. Until next time. Peace. Till next time. Love you guys. Love you Have guys. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night.